Yo, what's up guys, it's Andre of the Hair bringing you guys another video and in this video I'm going to show you guys how I made a UK drill beat. So let's head over into FL Studio and I'm going to show you guys how I went about making a UK drill beat and also how I structure a UK drill beat. So let's head over into FL Studio, let's go. Um, first let's listen to the beat first so you guys can see um, what we're working with today. So yeah, let's have a short preview of this beat, let's go. the beat so let's go into all of the different elements that made up this beat and I'm going to show you guys how I went about making it and um, yeah so let's start off with the melodies first let's grab this section of the beat right here um, so the first melody was actually this sound I found in Omnisphere it's called the Dream Piano D50 it's more like a trappy bell kind of sounding sound but I don't know, I kind of thought it just went good with like a drill beat. Um, this is the melody, very simple chord progressions here. Let's have a listen. Very simple. Um, with my main melodies, I like to make sure that there is some low end going on um, down here, obviously, and obviously some mid range frequencies and also a nice high end melody just so the main melody sounds more full and that's kind of always my thought process when I'm doing melodies um, the next melody I came up after this I actually didn't even come up with it it was literally just a sound in arcade so it's literally from the drip um, kit um, it's called dark secret and it's literally just like a reversed piano kind of sound so if you listen to it it literally just sounds like this And that really started to give the beat more of a drill kind of feel. So if you listen to that and the main melody. Yeah, so it has that haunting, um, sinister kind of feel, which is what you're going for when you do the drill beat. Um, the next sound was also from Arcade as well, but it's actually a string sound from the Drip Kit. It's from the Big Dreams plugin. And um, yeah, it literally sounds like this. So yeah, that again added to that drill kind of feel. I mean, whenever you have like an orchestra kind of sound, so like a choir or like a string or something like that, it automatically gives that drill kind of vibe. So if you listen to everything together. That's literally all the melodies that made up this beat. Um, obviously, I did a little bit of EQing, um, not too much. So let me, the choir, I know it. The string, I didn't even EQ it. Um, the reverse, I think I just took out some of the low end, some of the high end. And the dream piano, I just add RC20 to it. Um, just to give it more of a, kind of old school kind of texture I just use this final preset and I think I, I didn't even EQ it I just liked how it sounded so yeah let's move on to the drums and let's start off with the snares so the snare proper just really sharp abrupt sounding snare which is what you want when you're doing like a drill beat um, 
the snare patterns are pretty much the same I have like two different snare patterns but like they're really similar um, I'll play the first one for you as well just so you can hear what I mean yeah I just added that there for some extra bounce um, and the other snare patterns pretty much the same thing but I just added a different another snare in there just to add an extra bounce to it yeah and that's another thing you can do just add extra bounce to your drill beats so there's your snares um, the hi-hats there's a proper drill sounding kind of hi-hat um, when you're choosing your hi-hats for your drill beats you want something that's more um, thin and um, yeah more squared off you don't want like a really full round sounding hi-hat that you use in like drill beats I mean that you use in trap beats I find with a lot of drill beats you want like a really abrupt thin sounding hi-hat and as you can see here I messed around with the velocities as well just to add to that bounce and that's like a big key when it comes to adding bounce to your drill beats it's messing around with the velocity of the hi-hats so if you listen to it And that makes such a big difference like if I put the velocity back up it sounds alright but it doesn't have that same bounce you know what I mean so velocity is a big key when it comes to drill um, so if you listen to the hi-hats yeah decent um, so if you move on to the kicks right here um, when you're choosing your kicks in your drill beat you always want something that's punchy that's going to punch through the 808s so that's what I found here and you're going to play a very simple pattern that's going to go well with your hi-hats and your snares so if you listen to the kick pattern here very simple and the kick is very punchy you can kind of EQ your kick if it's not hitting hard enough but I think sound selection is so important like just choose a kick that already sounds good and also obviously put soft clipper on your master as well because that's going to make a big difference um, so let's listen to all the drums all together the kicks are hitting the hi-hat rolls and stuff like that proper nice little drill bounce so if I take the soft clipper on off, it won't have that same punch. It sounds kind of weird. So yeah, um, last thing we added to the beat was literally just the eight to weights. It's two different patterns, just because I like to have some variation on my eight weights. Eight weights. You want something that's nice and long with a lot of release. You can do the bass glides. Another big key with the 808s as well that I don't see people talking about is literally um, turning up the attack. So have the attack at like 10% or 15%. It depends on the 808s. Like obviously, different 808s sound differently, but turning up the attack adds to that drill feel, and that's something that you only really see in a lot of drill beats. Is that they love to turn up the attack with their um, 808s because it just gives that drill kind of feel to it so if you listen to it and if I turn the attack back down it's cool but you'll notice when I turn the attack up it kind of has that that dip that you hear when you listen to like a drill 808 so if you listen to the pattern real quick I think this is the first pattern yeah that's the first pattern and then that came up with the second pattern which is pretty much the same as the first pattern but it's just not as busy I have a glide there as well obviously you, you need to do the glides they're big key when it comes to drill beats um, yeah so that's really it that's the main body of the beat so if you listen to the drums and airways play together 
And that's like a big key as well when you're doing a drill beat is you want to make sure everything's bouncing off one another. Like with the snares there, that was, I didn't just put that in there, like that just added an extra bounce to the beat. And the 808s as well kind of went well with the snares as well. And the kicks also went well. And obviously a big key is to make sure your kicks are hitting when the 808s are hitting as well. But you don't always have to do that as well. Um, so that's the main body of the beat. If you listen to everything together, the beat should come together like this if you play everything. <laughs> That's the main body of the beat. Obviously you structure it off and you don't have everything playing all together throughout the entirety of the beat. But that's kind of like the climax of the beat. So if you listen to the structuring, I always structure my beat. I always start off with like eight bars. Um, just of the main melody playing. So obviously you have your producer tag. You know the rappers saying, yo, like, you know, they're getting ready to go into the verse. And um, this is really the first session right here. So the first session is always like 16 bars for me. So these first 16 bars is always gonna be the first section. And then the chorus right here is normally about eight bars. And I always include like an extra sound in the chorus just to signify that it's the chorus. Um, and the chorus is always like the climax of the beat as well. So that's when I have everything playing all together. Another thing I added as well is just this riser. just to add an effect. Um, the way I like to structure my drill beats, I like to have it drop after two bars. So as you can see here, um, we play the melody for two bars and then the beat just drops in rather than kind of waiting for the four bars and then dropping the beat here, I like to drop it halfway through the four bars. And that's a, uh, that's a tactic that a lot of people use in drill beats. And I also like to cut the hi-hats off here as well, just to add, just to build that momentum. So if you listen to how the beat drops here. And you hear that a lot in drill beats. That's, you, they always drop it like that after two bars they drop it in instead of waiting for the four bars to finish and then dropping it in. Um, so that's like a big key when it comes to structuring your drill beats. And um, yeah, if you see how I structured it here, again, same thing, 16 bars for the chorus, I mean 16 bars for the verse, two bars for the chorus, um, same thing here, 16 verse, two bar chorus. Sometimes I have um, the chorus sound um, playing through the verse section, but that's just to add variation to the beat, just so it doesn't sound too repetitive. And in terms of the outro, I just play literally just the main melody, and probably like the counter melody for about, what, eight bars, four bars, whatever, doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? I don't really do too much with the outro. But yeah, um, so that's really the beat right here. Um, that's how I made the melodies. This is how I structure my beats here. Um, so yeah, if we want to listen to the whole beat together, um, it'll come together like this. Just loop to 
again and then obviously we have the outro here and that's really it that's the whole process that really goes into making a drill beat um, when it comes to me making a drill beat obviously sometimes it's going to be different sometimes I add like effects sounds and stuff like that so that the little gunshot sound with the reverb that you hear in the little ghosty beat ghosties beats or the little vox um, sometimes I add that, sometimes I don't. I don't try to do the same exact thing every beat. And after this, obviously, you start mixing the beat and stuff like that, but I'm not really going to get into that too much because I don't want this video to be too long. So, you guys, that's pretty much it. That's the whole beat. That was every single component that made up the beat, and that's the whole process that went into making the beat. I hope you guys learned something from this video because I know it can be kind of awkward to make drill beats. So, I hope you guys learned something from this, and hopefully, this can make it a little bit easier for you to make a drill beat in the future so you guys tell me if you like videos like this where i kind of just um, explain the process of making the beat and also explaining the process of structuring a beat tell me in the comments if you like videos like this if videos like this help you but yeah guys i hope you guys liked the video uh, if you did like the video though please click the like button down below and subscribe for more because i have way more videos like this coming out every single week and if you guys want to purchase any beats you can click the link in the description down below i have an offer going on for 10 free beats so if you want that offer I'll click the link in the description below and you can get it um yeah you guys can also follow me on twitter you can follow me on instagram for all the latest updates and i'll catch you guys in the next video Peace.